Good morning. Okay, so AP test. I will tell you honestly, AP teachers, not just here in Midland, like across the board, world history AP teachers, um, were hoping that College Board would do something like they did last year for the AP test, where they cut it a little bit. They're not going to. We have gotten an email from College Board that says, normal AP test. I don't know how they're going to do it, where you're social distance and doing it on paper, but they have said normal. That means 55 multiple choice questions. That means three short answer questions. And that means two essays. The long essay question, which you just pull the information out of your head, and then the DBQ, which is a document-based question. <coughs> so, you have two different documents in this little, I don't know, assignment, okay? The first one looks like this. It's probably horrifying to you. Oh, wait, hold on. Hold on. There's something in the hallway. Okay, I had a teacher asking me a question. Okay, so anyway, um, the first one looks like this, okay? This is a major grade. This isn't just for weird COVID year. Like, I always do this, all right? This is a major grade. The other one that you have is this right here. This is really just kind of a review, all right, about what we've already done. Last semester, when we were looking at documents, okay, and I was having you write a thesis and then context and then evidence, those are the parts of a learned, a college level essay, T C E A S Y, thesis, context, evidence, analysis, synthesis, why. You should know how to write a thesis now. Absolutely. You should know how to do context now. Absolutely. If you don't know how to do context, it's not that you don't know how to do context, it's that you don't know your history. So you can't do context. Okay, so quick review, okay? The thesis. The thesis is the first sentence of your paper, very first sentence. Okay, it's made up of two different things, a stem, which is just restating the question. And then it's made up of three proofs. The proofs are going to prove whatever point you're trying to make. Okay, the thesis, the very first sentence tells the reader what the entire paper is about. And then your three proofs tell the reader what each paragraph is going to be about. Um, thesis. Hmm. I'm trying to think of a thesis. Teaching during a COVID year is hard because. That was the stem. Now my three points, my three proofs. Because I have to teach online and in person. Proof one. Because, um, I don't know. I don't know, quarantining. Kids are in and out because of quarantining. That's point two. And then point three, my second or my third point would be, I don't know, having to wear masks. Three proofs that prove why teaching is hard during a COVID year. Each paragraph is going to be about those three proofs. The first paragraph is going to be about, oh crap, I forgot what it was. Oh, teaching in person and online. The second paragraph is going to be about quarantine issues. Kids coming in and out because of being quarantined. And then the third paragraph is going to be about the annoyance of masks. Make sense? It should. Okay, context. Context is also in the intro paragraph. It should be right after the thesis sentence, right after. It's roughly two or three sentences telling what's going on. 
if I just say teaching during the COVID pandemic is hard because blah, blah, blah. An alien doesn't know what that is. You have to give some context, some background, explaining why we have a weird COVID year. What is COVID? Why is it an issue? It's not that it's necessarily more dangerous than other illnesses. It's that we don't have medicine for it yet. So you have to give some background. What's going on in the rest of the world at this time? Like exploration, the period of exploration, what's going on in the rest of the world at this time? Well, this is the middle of the Renaissance. Oh, this is the middle of the Protestant Reformation. This is a time period when not, not only like the world is being made bigger because of exploration, but people's own intellectual abilities are being made bigger because of education. Okay. So you have to talk a little bit about what's going on. The intro, tell me what is going on. If you don't do that, you don't know what's going on. We actually had something really funny happen in sixth period. And this was an excellent example of context. And I told my kids that and they were like, Oh, it was like the light bulb went off. And they were like, yes, you're right. So one of my classes was behind one day, fourth period, I think. And it was because my dad kept texting. He was sending pictures, okay, of a rocking chair that he was building, like putting together. And he was sending pictures to the family as it was getting done. So it was like, picture when this is done and picture and picture and picture. And like people kept commenting. And you know how those kind of texts are, your phone's like, ding, 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 ding. And I was like, oh my gosh, I'm trying to teach. So I finally looked at it during fourth period to see what the heck was going on. And then my kids were like, well, can you share it with us? So then I shared it with my fourth period, right? Fast forward to sixth period that same day. Sixth period, I said something about fourth period being behind. And they were like, why? What happened in fourth period? And I was like, oh, my dad kept texting. And then they just looked at me like I was stupid. And I was like, you know, he kept texting about the rocking chair. Because I thought I had already told the fourth period the story about the rocking chair. My sixth period didn't know anything about the story of the rocking chair. Because there is a story. I know you don't know it either. But there is a story about this rocking chair being built. But my sixth period didn't know about it. So I was like, you know, the rocking chair. He was showing us pictures. And they're looking at me like I'm dumb. And I'm like, right? And they're like, okay. It was at that moment that somebody said, what rocking chair? And I was like, oh, I didn't tell you this dumb story? And then it was like, oh, wonderful teaching moment. See, that's context. If you don't have the context of the rocking chair, it doesn't mean anything to you when I say, oh, my dad's sending me pictures of the rocking chair just like it doesn't mean anything to you because you don't know about the rocking chair story either. You have to give background information to explain the history that's going on. If your essay is about Henry VIII, you better explain the fact that Henry VIII needs a male heir. Why not a female heir? What's the issue with that? Why? It's gonna change his family name. If you have an essay about art, okay, in the Renaissance, you better write about art in the medieval period to talk about how it has changed. You have to give background information. Otherwise, it doesn't mean anything to anybody, okay? The next one, evidence. Evidence is the biggest percentage, like the biggest number of points that you get on your DBQ, on your essays. That's why it's the biggest, okay? Because evidence, TCE evidence, it's the three bodies, oh, it's the three body paragraphs of your paper, okay? Each paragraph should prove your thesis. Again, paragraph number one for me is going to be 
oh, that it's hard teaching online and in person. And then I'm going to explain in that paragraph why. So you can't ask me questions. You're watching this right now. And you're like, well, I want to know about the rocking chair. But I can't tell you. Why not? Because everybody doesn't want to know about the rocking chair. You can't just ask a question when you want to know something. You have to like schedule the time to come in during 315 to 415 so that we can talk if need be. Everything that I do orally with my kids in class, my kids online are having to type. I'm going to use those points to prove why it's hard teaching both. Paragraph two, what was it? Oh yeah, about quarantining kids. I'm going to use specific examples of, you know, uh, Bob who was here and then he had to leave for quarantining for two weeks. Then he came back for like two days and then he had to leave again for quarantining for two weeks. Bob has missed a crap load of stuff because even though Bob's healthy, he still has to be kicked out and quarantined. That's what paragraph two is about. Then paragraph three, what was it? What was paragraph three? Oh, masks. I know you're sitting there going, masks, masks, miss. See, I don't have you to help me remember because I'm old. In fact, January 20th is my birthday and I'm a whole 43. Okay, that being said, um, masks. Man, I can't understand people when they talk with their masks on. My class is an open forum and people just answer questions and people just talk all the time in my room. My room is not silent. But when somebody says an answer, I'm like, what? What? Because I don't know what they're saying to me. It sounds like, wah, 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 wah. yeah. So you're going to talk about masks in the third paragraph. That's your evidence proving your three thesis proofs. Okay, there are some rules. Each proof is its own paragraph, okay? Each evidence must be specific examples. I have to be specific. I can't just say it's hard teaching both online and in person because I have to make videos. Well, why are making videos hard? Oh, uh, they're not really hard. It just takes time. So you have to be specific. You can't just say it's hard making videos. Why? You can't just say um, Henry VIII divorced his wives because he wanted a son. Why? There's always the why. Again, when you write an essay, you have to think in the back of your mind, does the person who I'm writing this for understand what I'm saying? Because if the person that you're writing this essay for knows nothing about history, nothing, you have to write an essay as if they can understand everything. Not by looking crap up, not from previous knowledge. Again, I say this all the time, but pretend you're writing an essay for an alien, somebody that you've never, or somebody that has never known anything about the history of the world. You have to treat them almost like a child in your explanation process. You can't just say, Wearing masks makes it hard to understand people. Why? Why? You have to be specific and include specific examples. Okay? In a DBQ, you have to use six out of the seven or eight documents. You're usually going to be given seven or eight documents. You have to use six. What if I don't? then you don't get all of your points. You could get two out of the three evidence points. You're not going to get all of your points. In a DBQ, the evidence is the documents. And if you only use three out of the seven or eight documents, you didn't even use the majority of them. You're not going to get the majority of the points. You have to use six. You have to. No option, you have to. 
And then right here, we're going to talk about this a little bit more as we go. There has to be at least one piece of outside information in a DBQ, something that does not come from the documents, something that comes from your own brain. I can't explain that without showing you documents yet. So just hold on. But if you have documents in front of you, something that proves your point from your own brain. It doesn't have to be the same country. If, if talking about Henry VIII, you want to talk about, I'm just making this up because I can't think of an example, but you want to talk about Ottoman Empire succession. There was a situation where the Ottoman Empire didn't have somebody to take over the throne. And oh my gosh, look what happened. That was not a document. It came from your own brain. Guys, the only way that you can do this right here that's highlighted outside information, it's just like context. If you don't know your history, you can't do outside information. You also can't do context if you don't know your history. That's why all y'all who think it's funny and you tell me, because you tell me, I, I, I don't know why, but you tell me and you think it's funny. Oh yeah, miss, I don't watch those videos. I know, I can tell by your grades and you're not gonna pass the AP test. So it's your problem, it's not my problem. You have to know your history to do context and to do the outside information, okay? Then finally for the DBQ, you're gonna group, oh, son of a biscuit, I just moved everything, there we go. You're gonna group your documents. Um, I'm gonna explain that more, so just hold off for a second. But you're gonna group your documents by what proofs they prove, by what proofs in the thesis they prove. So if I have a document about Bob who keeps getting quarantined every two seconds, he, I'm gonna put that document, okay, that talks about Bob being quarantined every two seconds with proof number two, paragraph number two, kids getting quarantined. If I have a document about not being able to understand what people are saying because your mask is like blah, 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 you i'm going to put that document with number three you're going to want to group your documents okay based on your three proofs guys first thing you should do is write that thesis if you write the thesis first the rest falls into place naturally i've said this before and i'll say it again when I've seen kids who just sit or sit there at their desks and like not knowing what to write. I'm like, dude, why aren't you working? Miss, I don't know what to write. I don't know where to start. It's because you don't have a thesis. First, do your thesis sentence. Then everything else will fall into place. You have to know your three proofs first. Okay? This page right here really is just kind of a review. Now I want you to look at this. Don't save. Look at this. Look at the other document that you have. It's horrifying looking. It's a lot of pages. You're like, oh my gosh. This is a major grade. Okay, this is a what? Oh, a major grade. Everything you're doing right now, you need. So be sure you're saving it. Be sure you're taking pictures of it or some of you, I know you print stuff, whatever, you need this. Because after we've looked at these documents, you have a DBQ to write using these documents. You know how in class, last semester, we had documents, yeah? You had them all separate, okay, online. This is what it looks like for the kids in class. They're all together like this in a big packet, all right? And one day, I'm like, okay, get out your stuff and look at document seven. Get out your stuff and look at document six, okay? And I know, I misnumbered. 
I don't want to change it now because they're already like printed for the kids in class. But yeah, there's two document sixes. Just go with it. Okay. Um, so anyway, it looks like this for kids in class. Last semester, at the end of last semester, we were looking at evidence. We are still looking at evidence. Again, because it, it, it it's the most points that you can get, it needs the most practice. And at the end of last semester with the Renaissance, you were just doing basic evidence. Now we're getting more specific, okay? Let me make this big so it's easier for everybody to see. Okay. <sighs> this right here is what I just went over, okay? Um, what you're gonna do, you're gonna read the document, and then I have already given you a thesis down here, okay? The thesis here says this. The Aztec are a barbaric people who believe in false gods, murder their own people, and refuse education. Okay, look. The Aztec are a barbaric people who, that is the stem. The question to this essay might have been, why are the barbaric, I'm sorry, why are the Aztec considered barbaric by the Spanish? You say, the Aztec are a barbaric people because, or I said who, that's fine. And then proof number one, they believe in false gods. They murder their own people. They refuse education. If you were writing an entire essay with this, that means paragraph one is going to be about believing in false gods. Paragraph two is going to be about murdering their own people. And then paragraph three is going to be about refusing education. Hey, by the way, what viewpoint is this? Is this what an Aztec would say about themselves? Guys, the source of your document always matters. This is a letter from Hernan Cortez. Who's Cortez? Oh, you should know because your vocab quiz last week. Plus I taught it last week. He's writing to his king in Spain. So this is a Spanish viewpoint, okay? Your essay is gonna be proving this. You're not writing an essay on this, don't freak out. What you're gonna do now is you're gonna read this document, okay? And you're gonna look for specific pieces of evidence. Three, one, two, three. From this document that prove these three things. What is it that proves they believe in false gods? What does this document say that proves that? What does the document say that proves that they murder their own people? What does this document say that proves that they refuse education? Okay. All right. Look at your thesis first so that you know what you're looking for. Then go back and read it. They have a custom, horrible and abominable and deserving punishment. Whenever they ask anything of their gods in order for their requests to be fulfilled, they take many boys, girls, men, and women in the presence, sorry, in the presence of the statues of their gods, and they cut open their chests. While they're still alive, they take out their hearts and their entrails. They then burn the organs, offering the smoke to a, I'm sorry, as a sacrifice to their gods. No year passes in which they do not kill and sacrifice 50 souls at each temple in their kingdom. I did everything I could to steer them away from their false gods and to draw them to our Lord God. Montezuma agreed that I probably knew best. He said that as long as I taught the Aztecs our religion, they would follow my directions. Therefore, I removed the statues of false gods, cleaned the temples, and taught the people our religion. The rest of the Aztec did not accept the new religion that I was giving them. They did make sure, though, 
that they did not sacrifice any more humans when I was in the city. From that letter, what is something that was said in there that proves they believe in false gods? You're like, but miss, it doesn't prove it because they think they're real. It doesn't matter what they think. This is from the point of view of a Spaniard. So you're proving this, even if you don't believe it. You're like, what? Even if you don't believe it, you have to look at what the document is saying. You're gonna find wherever it is that he's talking about false gods and type it. Yes? Then, evidence two. Where does it talk about them murdering their own people? And you're going to write whatever it is up here. Guys, just copy paste. Copy and paste. Okay? But you're going to write what it is from this document that proves that they murder their own people. And then, evidence three, you're going to write where it says that they prove, I'm sorry, where it proves that they don't accept the correct gods. Or, I'm sorry, they don't, uh, what is it, accept education. Right now, that's all you're doing. You're like, but, but it says outside info and it says group. Right now, that's all you're doing. Look at document two. You're doing the exact same thing. The exact same thing. You have a thesis right here. The people of the Americas were naive, uneducated barbarians. Stem, the people of the Americas were. And then your three paragraphs are going to be about. They're naive. They're, they're, they don't understand things. They're uneducated. And then third, they're barbaric. Evidence one, when you read this, what proves that they are naive? Evidence two, what proves that they're uneducated? And evidence three, what proves, where is it, that they are, I forgot, barbarians. There we go, barbarians. Do you see outside info? Leave it alone for right now. Unless you already have some ideas. Um, if you already have some ideas, like things you already know, you can jot it down, but I'm going to talk about it more later, okay? My brain decide. Outside info and group. Leave blank. Leave blank. Leave what? Leave blank. Put in context. When I say this statement, the people of the Americas are naive, uneducated barbarians. If I just say that, you're like, we are not. Look at the document, the source. The source of the document is a letter from Christopher Columbus. It's Columbus who would be saying this. What is the context? What's going on in the world? What has Columbus just discovered? What was he looking for? Why might he think that? Context. What I'm looking for right now is context and your three evidence points, okay? today and tomorrow, so Monday and Tuesday, you're doing, let me think, it may actually be today, tomorrow, and Wednesday, Wednesday. I need to write that down or I'll forget.
what is it, context? Because I usually do this in class with everybody. So I'm like, hmm, how long is this going to take? Hmm. It's usually three days. Um, so context and evidence. Okay. You do those three things today, tomorrow, and Wednesday for all of these. All of these. Yes? Thursday. I'm going to explain outside information and grouping. Yes? And then Friday, you're writing your DBQ. So, you're looking at this whole thing and you're like, oh my gosh, this is so much work. Guys, on a DBQ, you only have 60 minutes. Now, I don't expect you to do all this that fast um, because this is your first time to do all of this. But when you're actually writing a DBQ, you only have 60 minutes. Okay, um, you need to do evidence and context. You notice here you don't have context. I didn't have room on the first page, that's why, okay? But you need to do evidence and context for all of these. One of the things that I have happen whenever I do this with kids is they're like, miss, my context is always the same. Yeah. All of these documents are about exploration. They're all about the same topic. They're all about the Americas. So wouldn't they all have the same context pretty much? They might differ a little bit, but pretty much it's the same, okay? Because um, you only do context once in one essay. You do it right after the, the, the thesis, okay? Um, Here's what the overall big picture is. We're breaking down each document so you can see how to like analyze a document, okay? Then when this whole thing is filled out, that should be Thursday. Thursday, Thursday. When this whole thing is filled out on Thursday, then on Friday, you're going to get the DBQ question to answer and write your essay. The documents are going to be some of these exact same documents. I'm not going to tell you what the question is yet, but the documents are going to be the same. Okay. Some will be thrown out. Why would I throw some of the documents out? You're welcome. If you have your evidence already filled out this way, writing your DBQ on Friday, your document-based question should be so easy. You write your thesis, you look down here at your context, you write your context. You then are gonna group these, and I'll explain grouping on Thursday, okay? You're gonna group your documents and figure out what your three points are. And then you just look at evidence and go, oh, here's my evidence for that, and write it. That's big picture. That's what I do with this. Uh, we don't have a test for the period of exploration. This is what I do for the period of exploration. I break down a DBQ into this, okay? And I work with the kids for about three days in class as we go through these. If you have questions, you got to come in to hangouts. You have no chance to pass the AP test, none. If you just, I don't really get it, but whatever. You have no chance, okay? So what you're doing, let me say again, you're reading each document and some of the documents are pictures, okay? Guys, don't look up anything. When you look at this picture here, Okay, the monument of whatever his name is in Cuba. You're going to be like, I don't know who that guy is, so I'm going to Google it. 
No, you can't do that on the AP test. They're going to put a picture on there of some Native American you've never seen before. And you have to use these pictures to get information. Look, this guy, I don't know how you say his name. We'll just call him Hat. Hat was a strong Native American chief who unsuccessfully fought the Spanish for control of his land and has become a hero to all of his people. How has he become a hero? You don't have to look him up. There's a statue. Obviously, he's a hero. How do we know he's a fighter? Oh, uh, I can't zoom in. You see what I'm pointing at? If you don't, then zoom in and look. Huh, we know he's a warrior. How do we know he unsuccessfully fought? Well, Cuba isn't Native American anymore. The Spanish took it over. You have to be able to look at pictures and documents and not look anything up. Because again, on the AP test, you cannot do that. It's not available for you. You have to start learning how to do it now or you're going to not be able to do it on the AP test. So let me say for the 400th time, what you're doing is you're reading the documents or you're looking at these pictures, okay? And you are giving me the three pieces of evidence that prove whatever the thesis is saying from the document. Then if it has context, some of them don't have context, okay? But if it has context, include context. You do not, right now, have to do outside information or grouping yet. Do this today, Tuesday, and Wednesday. And then Thursday, we'll do grouping. We'll do outside information. Okay, then Friday, you're using this to write an actual DBQ essay. Okie dokie. If you have questions, please ask. Okay, das ist alles. Bye.